Hey everybody, got a quick little video here for you about Rails templates and their strict locals. As you can see here, you can also do default values and it might be useful in the future when uh, for pre-compilation. But uh, for now, it's more about just limiting the strict locals. So we'll start off here by just getting a new project going. And we'll do a couple of quick setup things too, just to make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, put in some action text. So we'll get that going here. All right, so here we go. We're just gonna also gonna do a quick little scaffold and show you a nice little nicety uh, added to Rails by uh, our own Chris Oliver here. The content rich text. So we all show you what that does. When you come in to your project, you're going to see in the models folder, it's already added the has rich context, rich text for you. Uh, oh, right. Also, we're just going to show quickly, we're using SQLite for this instead of Postgres, keeping it simple. And that's this is where we see there has rich text content when you use the rich text helper than the scaffold. So in our partial here, uh, we're going to add a magic comment. And while there is no magic in Rails, according to many people, uh, there is a magic comment in Ruby. So basically, you just add the pound sign here. Uh, we're using ERB templates. So there's also the brackets and the percent sign. And you have a directive and then a value. So here, locals, and we're going to say post. And there's a little dash there as well. And you do need the brackets uh, around that in this case. So a quick, a quick little post here. Hoo -ah. Create the post. All right, so if later in the year you were to change to something like article, um, you'll see the helpful error message tells you here now, missing locals article. This is a way of just limiting it to strict locals. This can be helpful when you're on larger teams, especially as the years go by and you have to adjust things and mistakes are made. It'll tell you clearly, oops, you forgot to pass in the locals. Passing in locals for partials has always been a good thing to do, uh, mostly to avoid some subtle bugs. Uh, with Rails, not magic, but Rails uh, conventions here, you don't have to type all this, but this is what's happening under the hood. So just having a sec to type this out. So normally, when you pass in a partial, it's a good idea to pass in locals. Uh, but before, it wasn't. There's no way to strictly enforce it, and that's what this new change is doing in Rails seven one. It's allowing you to strictly enforce the passing of locals. And so this is what is actually happening under the hood. And I'll just uh, go back to the app here and show you quickly um, that it is in fact working. You can also specify a path. For example, if it was in a shared folder or something for various partials. In case you're not using Rails conventions, you can actually set the path and everything. So we'll go here, just bruise or cruise, cruise around a little, uh, just show you that, yeah, it's still working. Uh, I'm not suggesting you should actually type this out normally. I just want to show you. So we're going to put it back to the regular Rails conventions, which is what you should be using. And get rid of that little bracket. All right, so we will also show that you can pass in multiple uh, locals. So it doesn't have to be just one, it can be a bunch. I'll just do a little sort of contrived example for our simple app here. Uh, you can also set default values on your locals. So here we'll set a default value of a zero. And then we'll just type in a little something to show the comment count. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a little string interpolation uh, for the variable here. And we'll just write comments. All right, we'll pop over back to our browser here and show. So we got zero comments. Uh, now, we don't have an actual variable being passed down. So we'll just, for a contrived example here, change the default to show you something. So when you got zero or two, Two comments, zero comments, everything looks good. What happens if you have one comment, though? So you got one comment, one 
comments. Ooh, that could be better. Well, there's actually a nice little helper we'll show you from Active Support, which you can use to uh, account for this. So we'll change this up a little bit. We're going to use the pluralize method. So the uh, value is passed in, and then the string is what's going to be pluralized. So as we can see here, one comment. So that's a nice little active support helper. You can use many other cases, not just here. And what else have we got here? So you can also uh, limit the locals to, uh, to not have any locals whatsoever. You can enforce it and say, nope, they cannot pass in any locals. So here you just put the empty brackets, parentheses, excuse me. And then you'll see it also gives a helpful error message, no locals accepted. So it's going to tell you right away, boom, what's wrong. We'll put that back to what we had before. And also, I mentioned at the beginning we were using SQLite. If you want to change later, small little tip here, uh, unrelated to template locals, is you can do a DB system change with this command. And you can just specify the database, so I say to Postgres. Uh, you'll have to overwrite a couple of files, in this case one. And when you go back to your database, you see we are now in fact switched over to using Postgres. And also jump into the gem file and just show you that uh, it's using the Postgres gem for active record. Small little tip. Uh, another little tip is if you want to, uh, if you're typing that all the time, Postgres and Tailwind, for example, you could actually use something, the Rails uh, config file, which might be fun. So when you list out your files, if you want to see what you have, you might want to use the dash capital A just to see all the hidden files. This is a hidden file. If you don't have one, you can create it this way. And once you're in your file, you can type your uh, options that you usually like to when you use when you create a Rails app. And that way you won't have to type it. So here we'll just add a uh, very common flag here, database Postgres SQL. And a lot of people use Tailwind, so put that here as well. Once you save this, and now every time you create a new app, you won't have to type these. You can just type Rails new your app name. So we'll back under our folder. Rails new, and we're just going to type the app name. I'm not going to put the Tailwind or Postgres. And you'll see here when you click in, take a look around. That we do, we are using Postgres. You'll see here. And just a quick little check for Tailwind. We'll just jump over here and show you that in our new app where we did not type it, we are in fact using Tailwind. So that's it. A uh, couple extra tips.